explosion, chemical spill, earthquake, tornado, major accident. That's what this program is all about. Emergency action to help you and your fellow workers in the event of a major emergency. Let's begin with some basics. First of all, your company must have written policies, procedures, and personnel trained to respond to emergencies. Next, everyone in the organization should be familiar with emergency procedures. Naturally, everyone knows to call professional emergency numbers, and individuals have natural self-preservation instincts. In case of an earthquake, the most natural thing to do is run out of the building. That's a natural instinct, but it's not the right thing to do. Common sense tells you that if you see a fire, the first instinct is to try to put it out with a fire extinguisher. If you haven't been trained, that might not be the action to take. So let's just say that you need to know the proper action to take in case of an emergency. So let's review some basics to help keep you and others safe in case of an emergency. No matter what job you have or in what industry you work, there are responsibilities associated with your job. Safety for you, safety of your coworkers and visitors to your facilities is increasingly important. What this means is there is more responsibility in your job today than there was 20 or 30 years ago. Times have changed. So have the business and environments in which we work and live. Safety applies to everyone in all cases, and all the time. You'd be surprised to learn that office accidents can occur as often as any other department, even though the physical hazards appear to be less in an office environment. Safety is your responsibility, no matter where you work or what job you perform. It's management's responsibility to provide safety training and information about your specific job, machines, equipment, and other potential hazards. In every organization, there are policies and procedures relating to your job and how you perform it. It's your responsibility to learn and follow these policies and procedures. If you have questions, be sure to ask your supervisor. If you're new to the company, there are many questions you'll have during your familiarization or orientation process. Years ago, training was fairly simple because safety issues were simple. In today's business environment, Training is an ongoing process. Let's take a look at some of these safety responsibilities. There are emergency action plans for different types of emergencies, such as fires, tornadoes, bomb threats, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, and other unexpected emergencies. You'll be provided additional training in emergency action procedures. But as a quick review, let's take a look at some basics. In case of fire, Exit the building by appropriate exits. Remain calm and report to your designated area so your supervisor can account for you. It's important to know if anyone is left inside the building or if they're missing. In case of earthquakes or tornadoes, it's best not to go outside. Falling electrical lines, broken glass, or other dangerous conditions could exist outside your building. Experts recommend that you get under a sturdy desk or other heavy object and duck, cover, and hold. Duck under a heavy object for safety, cover your head with your hands, and hold that position until it's safe to move. In cases of emergency, there are people assigned to direct you to safety or what action you should take to protect yourself. Remain calm and use your good judgment and training to protect yourself and the lives of others. Make sure your emergency action plans are kept up to date, that proper emergency telephone numbers are located on every telephone, and that everyone knows what to do in case of an emergency. Chemicals can harm individuals, property, the environment, and can be hazardous to our health. There are literally hundreds of thousands of chemicals, and they must be controlled so they don't harm our health or the environment. Everyone handles hazardous chemicals, either at work or at home. Cleaners, cleansers, bleach, pesticides, sprays, fertilizers are all hazardous chemicals. It's not only chemicals at work, but also generally all chemicals must be treated with respect. Above all, read and follow the warnings on all chemical labels. 
At work, there are many rules and standards that must be followed when handling, using, storing, and disposing of hazardous materials. All chemicals in the workplace must be listed on an inventory. If you introduce new chemicals in your workplace, these chemicals must be listed on the company's chemical inventory list. This information is extremely valuable for professional firefighters. Each chemical must also have an MSDS. An MSDS is a material safety data sheet that is supplied by the chemical manufacturer and contains information about that particular chemical. This information is important since it tells you about the chemical, what personal protective equipment is required, what first aid procedures to use, emergency procedures, and much more. Chemicals in your work area must be labeled. There are exceptions for immediate use type chemicals, but generally the rule of thumb is all chemicals must be properly labeled. This helps prevent inadvertent mixture or use of the wrong chemical. Hazardous chemicals can be spilled and create a potentially harmful situation. Your responsibility is to learn what chemicals are in the workplace and what action should be taken in case of a spill or other emergency. Just as in a fire, if you're not trained to handle the situation, report it, get out, and leave the cleanup to the professionals. If you know what chemical was spilled, tell the emergency responders, but never put your life at risk around chemical spills. If you notice a chemical spill and you're not sure what to do, report it so it can be taken care of immediately. One last thing about chemicals. If you haven't been properly trained and authorized to mix chemicals, don't mix chemicals. Different kinds of chemicals react differently with other chemicals. Even putting water on some chemicals can cause a violent reaction or explosion. Don't mix chemicals unless you've been trained and authorized by the company. In case of a fire emergency, you must know the location of all exits, not just the ones located near you. It's extremely important to know these routes and where they lead, because in case of smoke from fire, you may not be able to see the exit signs. You may have to feel your way out of the building, so it's critical to know where all the different exits are located. The vast majority of deaths in fires result from smoke, not the actual fire. Smoke rises in a fire, so it's best to stay close to the floor if there is smoke in your area. Don't panic, because help is on the way. We've seen examples of panic in hotel and high-rise fires, but due to today's technology, building codes, and sprinkler systems, there is no need to panic. Emergency rescue is already in action. It's difficult to envision your work area completely covered in smoke where you can't see anything, but it can happen, and that's why you need to be prepared. How about those fire extinguishers and fire alarms? Again, fire extinguishers just hang around, so you might have a tendency to forget where they're located. Learn where they're located and how to use them in case of an emergency. If you haven't had fire extinguisher training, ask your supervisor. Proper firefighting techniques can keep a small fire from becoming a disaster, so learn how to properly use fire extinguishers. Stand about 10 feet from the fire and use the keyword PASS to remember the extinguishing sequence. PASS. Pull the pin. Aim the nozzle towards the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle to expel the extinguishing agent and sweep from side to side. There's more to it than that, so take the time to learn how to use fire extinguishers properly. ABC type extinguishers, which can be used on almost all types of fires. Never try to extinguish an electrical fire with water. Just remember not to risk your life or the life of others to help extinguish a fire. Get out and leave the firefighting to the professionals. Life safety is paramount in trying to fight fires, especially with fire extinguishers. What's the proper procedure in the event of an alarm? If you have time, shut off electrical equipment and leave the building immediately through the emergency exits. Go to your assigned safe refuge area for a head count to ensure everyone is safely out of the building. This is one good reason for participating in emergency drills, to make sure you really know what to do in case of an emergency. 
The planning and testing phase of any emergency is critical to the successful evacuation in case of a real emergency. During the planning phase, you work out such critical items as how to assist physically impaired persons who may need assistance during emergencies, especially in stairwell travel. Don't forget assisting those visitors to the building who may not be aware of proper safeguards, exits, alarms, and evacuation procedures. While we're talking about elevators, let's remind everyone that in an emergency, an elevator is a very dangerous place to be. Never use elevators in case of an emergency, as the elevators can become stuck between floors. Smoke may enter the elevator shaft, and elevators may stop and open onto the fire floor and other unsafe conditions. In case of any emergency, use the stairwells. Never use the elevators. Perhaps the most important life safety feature in the building is the stairwell. Stairwells are the lifelines of any high-rise building. All stairwell doors should be locked from the stair side for security purposes. Your first reaction should be to exit down through stairwells, not running to the roof for helicopter rescue, which is the least desirable form of rescue. During an emergency, before you open any door, take the back of your hand to test if the door is hot. If the door feels hot to your skin, do not open the door. Use another exit. Doors should all be closed, but not locked. Doors help prevent smoke from spreading throughout the building, so doors should be closed in case of a fire or other emergency. In today's environment, there are a variety of emergencies that can occur. Some may be natural disasters. Some may be man-made. Let's begin with the potential emergencies that are man-made. Bomb threats are the most obvious, but let's also consider the new biological threats. Both of these threats should be taken seriously, but handled professionally, which will minimize the effects of the threat. A bomb or biological threat to the facilities or people inside is designed to cause a reaction. The caller wants to scare, intimidate, or cause anxiety. But whoever receives this type of call should not panic. Information from the caller is your first line of defense. Building security should maintain a bomb threat checklist for this use. Everyone should have this checklist placed near their telephone. In case you receive a threatening call, use the checklist to obtain as much information from the caller as possible. Quite often, this information is invaluable for the police. Regardless of whether the threat is a bomb, biological, or other similar threat, get as much information as you can from the caller. If another person can listen in on the conversation to verify information, that would be more helpful. Again, don't panic. Try to remain calm and get as much information from the caller as possible. The longer they are on the telephone providing information, the better the chance for diffusing the situation. Regardless of where you live, everyone is exposed to potential earthquakes. Buildings are better equipped and built for earthquakes. However, emergency planning and training is still an important part of any emergency survival. Without detailing every precaution to take in case of an earthquake, let's review some of the more important rules to follow. First, if you're inside the building in an earthquake, protect yourself with duck, cover, and hold. This has been a recommendation for over 50 years, and it still holds true. Duck under a sturdy desk or other stable object for protection from flying glass and debris. Cover your head with your hands to protect your head. Hold this position until such time as the all-clear signal has been given or the danger has passed. In an earthquake, generally there are aftershocks, so be prepared for additional earthquakes. Duck, cover, and hold may seem somewhat simple, but it has saved lives and countless injuries. Duck, cover, and hold is something that can save your life. In an earthquake, the natural tendency is to run out of the building. If you're in the building, get under a sturdy object or heavy desk. The core of the building is a safer part of the building in case of an earthquake. Stay away from windows and glass objects. If you run out of the building, you're running into potential falling objects, windows, broken glass, or downed electrical lines. 
the best advice is to stay in the building and seek refuge inside the building. Of course, never attempt to use the elevator in case of any emergency. Unfortunately, workplace violence does occur, and it can affect everyone in the workplace. Your company should have a written plan with appropriate training. One of the things you can do is follow your employer's security procedures. Take threatening or violent behavior seriously, and always report it to your supervisor. Don't think the incident is over because the troublemaker walked away. Deal calmly with angry people and try to diffuse tension as much as possible. Take special care when working alone or at night. Don't display valuables or carry more money than necessary. Don't be a hero. If someone demands your money or valuables, turn them over immediately. If someone points a gun at you, don't make any sudden moves and give in to their demands. Report all crimes and violent incidents to authorities immediately. The most important parts of emergency action are being trained and prepared for an emergency. What happens if someone is injured and bleeding? Have you been trained in bloodborne pathogens? If not, improper procedures of treating a bleeding individual could result in you being a victim also. You must be properly trained, provided with appropriate tools and equipment, and know proper company safety policies and procedures. Management's job is to provide all these things. Your job is to use this information, tools, equipment, and training to avoid accidents and injuries. Productivity and efficiency are job requirements. Safety is a job requirement, but more importantly, safety is a moral obligation to yourself, the company, co-workers, and your family. One accident is simply one too many. Thank you.